Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part three of my using Access as a database server. So if you haven't watched parts one and two yet, go watch them now and then come on back. You'll find links to them down below. They're both free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them. Come on back. Okay, next up, we need a way to send commands to the server. And we're going to do that by writing records in this command T. And the server will sit there looping until it sees a command. Now, I am going to just move these fake run report buttons over here. And we're going to make this bigger over here, too, so we can see it. Because we're going to want to see what's going on using the status box. Okay. All right. Now this is going to involve some looping because we're going to write a record to that command table to tell the server to do something. And we got to sit and wait until it's done. We can't just, you know, fire off one command after another. So I like to put a little checkbox on here that the user can use to abort if they need to. If something happens and it's like, oh, I got to get out of here. So we're going to throw a little checkbox on here. We're going to call this little guy abort. All right, we'll slide it maybe over here. That way, if it's the loop seems like it's stuck and, it, and the server's not responding or whatever, for whatever reason. All right, we'll call this guy abort. All right, so now for our get customers button. Previously, we did the commands here locally. So we're just going to get rid of this stuff here. But we're going to, I'm going to slide it down so we can keep it for now. Let's tackle these one at a time. So I'm going to throw an exit sub here. All right, because I don't want it to get down this far. All right, we're still getting customers from customer state, but we're not going to do that. We're going to tell the server to do that. Okay. So instead of current DB execute, I'm going to say send to server that same command. Well, what is send to server? Well, we're going to write our own function. Ready? Public function. Send to server. Command text is going to be sent to it as a string. And it's going to return a true or false value if it's successful or not. All right, as a Boolean. And the reason being is because we want to be able to check to see if it was successful or fail. Because if there's multiple commands down here, then we want to be able to abort. So down here, we're going to say, if not, send to server that stuff, parentheses, because it's a function now, then exit sub and you can put a warning message or an error message or whatever in there but essentially we don't want to continue on with more commands if this one failed so that's why that's a function and it's public because eventually we're going to move it to a global module right so anybody in the database can use it now in here we're going to need some variables we're going to need a record set so dim rs as a record set we're going to need command id because we're going to look up ids later on we're going to need a command completed because we're going to look up to see if the command is completed as a Boolean, and X as a long for just a counter variable. All right, then we're gonna say status sending command to server and command text. Now for now, I wanna see the actual SQL go into the server, right, just while I'm developing it. Later on, you can hide this kind of stuff, but for now, it's nice to see to make sure everything's you know gonna get up and, up and running and working. Okay, we're gonna open a connection to the command table, so set RS equals current db dot open record set command t we're going to say rs command date time equals now we're going to say rs command text equals whatever the command text was sent to the function so command text now i want to know which specific id this one was assigned so i can look it up in a minute and make sure that it's finished so command id equals rs command id this is a nice feature of record sets is while you're adding a record you can get the id of the record that's been assigned the auto number that's been assigned to this record already all right then rs update rs close set rs equals nothing all right we've now added a command to the table now on the other end the server is going to see that and it's going to now process it. So we're going to say status waiting for command ID. Command ID. To finish, right? We're going to wait for the server at this point. Wait for server. Right. Send command. 
I like using comments for me personally because the different color makes it easy to see the blocks of code. All right, we're gonna say command completed equals false. We're initializing our variables, x equals one for our counter loop. All right, while not command completed and not abort. In other words, we're gonna loop until either the command is completed or the user checks the abort box, all right? Now, how do we know when this command is completed? Well, command completed equals dlookup command completed from command t, where command id equals the command id we were assigned. And we shouldn't need a null nz here because that record should exist. We just added it to the table and the server won't be deleting it. It just marks it completed. So we're gonna check to see if the server processed this item. And if not, if not command completed, we're gonna hang around and wait. Then, what are we doing? We're gonna say status, waiting, and put the X there. So you see a one, two, three, and so on, right? X equals X plus one, of course. And then sleep sec one. Sleep sec is my own sleep second function. And of course, I did a video on it, so there's that. I'll put a link down below. But for those of you who want to see it, right click definition, and there's the code right there. It's in a global module, right? It says public declare point is the, and there's my sleep sec function. It just basically sleeps for however many seconds you tell it to sleep for. Okay? So now, by the time we exit this loop, command completed will be either true or false. And we're going to say if command completed, then I'm going to status completed, else status, error, or abort, and if, and then send to server equals command completed. In other words, I want you to return a value indicating whether or not you successfully completed. All right, now at this point, we can test to see if this thing is going to actually get put in that table. So let's come down here. One more thing I want to set is right here. At the top of this, I'm going to say abort equals false, just to make sure that the button or the checkbox gets set to false when you start running this. Nothing worse than you know running it from a you know a second time and then the box is already checked and it just aborts. All right, you ready? Let's give it a spin. Save it. Come out here. Close it. Close it. Open it back up again. And yeah, it moved. I know. All right. I'm going to uncheck the box just to make sure. Okay, ready? Get customers. Go. All right, update or cancel there with that. Okay, hold on. We got some got some errors in here. Ah, I forgot a line. That's what get that's what happens when I copy text from another page. I, I, I ran through a, a sample of this earlier. I forgot to rs.add new. I do that all the time. In order to start off the record, you have to add either add new or edit an existing one. We gotta add new. My bad. All right. Try it again. Ready? Go. Okay. It sent the command. And now it's waiting for the server to finish it. Let me abort. All right. See, send a command to server. And then it's just waiting now. Now, the server isn't doing anything because it's not even running, but we haven't coded any of that yet. So let's take a look at what's in the command table. And look at that. Oh, look at that right there. See, command. And then there's a command text. And now our system's going to sit there and wait for the server to process it and mark it completed. All right, I'm gonna delete this for now because the server's not there to do anything. But so far our code is working. It, it's putting a command in the table and waiting for the server to process it. And we will get to that part of the code in tomorrow's video. So come on back tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel for part four. That's gonna be it for your tech help video for today for part three. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, 
free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. 
You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.